There are many things that you can do every day to help you live from your feminine energy. And a lot of times we need to unlearn some of these unhelpful habits that we have developed over the years that may keep us stuck in our masculine energy. And what you will find is that once you are locked into that masculine energy, which we are all very skilled in, right? We all know how to call on our masculine. But once we get locked into that, it can be really challenging sometimes to fall back and lean back into our feminine. And so when we get into the habit of developing habits that allows us to strengthen and become more skilled in our feminine energy, it's easier for us to play between the two and to call on the energies that we need when we need them. Many of the habits that we have unintentionally, as I said, connect us more into our masculine. And this is because of the world we live in, we have things to do, we have things to take care of, we need to live, we need to survive, we have to make decisions all the time, and we take a lot of action, right? And so it's very easy for us to really get in this energy of always moving forward towards our goals and to always take care of the things that need to be done and to always be productive, and while this is so necessary for us, obviously, to, to live and to survive, I feel the way that we do it determines how connected we are into our feminine energy. There's a way to be productive and there's a way to move forward and there's a way to get all of those things done that is more nourishing and sustainable for us. As women, and that's what I want to talk to you about. So I have a few habits that I want to share with you, and it really is a very practical approach that I'm taking today to explain to you some of the things that you can start doing that will really make sure that you, you become more skilled in that feminine, you become more connected and tapped into your own feminine essence so that it is easier for you to get back there. So the very first habit that you can change is the first things that you do in the morning. So what's so important for us, for our feminine energy, is that we create and cultivate that connection with our feminine. And doing this as the very, very, very first thing that you do in the morning is incredibly helpful and it really will make a difference if you try this over a period of time. Just experiment with it. So often what happens is when we wake up in the morning, first of all, the alarm goes off or the children shout us awake or however you wake up in the mornings. And often your nervous system goes into shock, right? Because of the shrill alarm or because of the noises. And from that point, we go into action. If you have young children, they need to get to school, you've got to pack lunch boxes, you might have something that's happening at work, so your mind goes to the project that's there or the meeting that's going to happen. You basically take all of the energy and you send it into your mind to think and process and do the things that you are really good at. And in that act, we take the energy away from our body, from our feminine knowing, our feminine wisdom. And so instead of going into your mind immediately upon waking up, and this is a very difficult habit to break, I know that from experience, but really get into the habit of first connecting with yourself, putting a hand on your heart. While you're in bed, you don't even have to get up to do this. You do this while you're lying in bed and you just take a few seconds to breathe into yourself and to feel yourself where you are, to feel how you are doing, to feel what it is that you need today and really establishing that connection by continuing to come back to yourself, by continuing coming back to your feminine flow, you begin to strengthen your intuition because when you check in with yourself, when you connect with yourself, when you see what it is that you feel and what you need and what is going on inside of you, it starts to give you data. And this data begins to inform how you move through the world. If we just go straight into our minds, we become little robots and we take care of all of these things in the outside world, but we're really disconnected from our own truth. 
I know how seductive productivity is. I struggle with that myself, where, you know, especially if I have a big project that I need to get done or there's a big task ahead of me, what I want to do is I want to get up in the mornings and get straight into it and really, like a machine, work through it all. And then I feel really accomplished at the end of it. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with doing that right? If we want to get by in the world, sometimes, you know, we need to take action like this. So I'm not saying that this is wrong at all. I think it becomes a problem if this is the habitual way that we are, if we are always going for that dopamine rush that we get from the, from the productivity dragon that, we, that we're feeding inside of us. And I think the world that we live in makes it quite easy for us to fall into the temptation of, you know, taking things off our to-do list and getting things done. And so it's really helpful if we start to develop a counter habit to that, that that allows us to first check in with what is inside. The masculine is very much about doing and the feminine is about being. This is something that, that drives me a little bit nuts is often we think of being or I see it being explained as something which is quite passive, like the masculine is doing and it's action and the feminine is like, it's being, it's like being passive. And this is not how I see being at all. I see being as the act, because it's still an act, even if it's not an outward doing act. It's an act of being with what is here. It's an act of being with what is true. And it's an act of opening up and being with the information that's available to you so that that can inform you. That's what it entails to be a sovereign, embodied woman who lives from her divine feminine power is you use your own internal data to guide you, to inform you, and to, to help you move through the world in a way that honors who you are. This kind of self-empowerment where you are living from your own internal guidance, it affects Everything in your life, it affects all of the relationships. The way that you relate to other people changes. The way that people relate to you changes because people will always bounce off what we are unconsciously feeding to them. Our unconscious picks up all of this information all the time from, from other people when we engage with other people. And so the, the signals that you are sending off in terms of your own, your own anchoredness in your own internal power source that gets picked up by the people around you and this is why connecting with yourself connecting with your feminine core is such a very helpful habit to have the second habit is related to this in a way and this is to learn the art of slowing down again we are so used to pushing forward and to getting things done and to being in this linear timeline concept and for you to be able to feel yourself, for you to be able to really tap into what is alive inside of you, you need to slow down. You can't do that when you are constantly on the move. This is where it's so important for us to rest right, to bring rest into our lives. And again, not rest as in passively just resting and not doing anything, but, but resting as in choosing actions that are aligned with where I am in my energy, making sure that the, the practices and the rituals and the habits that I have are nourishing to my energy, making sure that after I've come off a project or a deadline that was really very demanding and that asked a lot of me, that I build time into my life and to my, into my day so that I can recuperate, so that I can nourish myself again, so that I can become more sustained from the inside, so that I can become more resilient. So for example, it's so helpful for us as women in terms of our menstrual cycle to, when we slow down, we can really begin to check how are we feeling in the different phases, the four phases of our menstrual cycle, and really starting to choose activities that are will benefit, activities that will benefit from our energy levels at this time. Of course, you can do whatever you want at any stage of your cycle, but it's more powerful for us if we align our energy and our actions. 
and then live in that way out into the world. When you have regular practices like walking or even working out, bring some slowness into that. Instead of just going for the burn, focus on what is happening internally. What is my experience of this? How am I feeling? What does my body need right now? When we start practicing the habit of slowness, it sensitizes us to our bodies because so often we don't feel our bodies. Think about how often does it happen that you sit at your desk, busy doing something, and you need to go to the bathroom, and you push it to the side. So you force yourself to ignore what happens in your body, and then after a while, you don't even feel that you need to go to the bathroom until it's, <laughs> until it's almost too late. And this is what we do. We learn to numb ourselves to the feelings and the sensations in the body. And when we slow down, it's a deliberate act of coming back into the body. It's a deliberate act of, of learning to savor life again. The experiences in life, using our senses, you can't do that on double speed. When we slow down is when we can really dip into the fullness of that experience. This act of slowing down and really taking your time to dip into your inner world is so underestimated. It is such a powerful, very, very powerful habit that will help you to connect to your feminine energy. And then another habit, which, <laughs> which I think you'll find particularly helpful, is to change your underwear right? So stop reaching for those panties with the holes in, and you know which ones it is that I'm talking about. There's a, a study that was done by Northwestern University, and in this study, what they did is they split the participants into a group that wore white lab coats and into another group that just wore their street clothes. And they gave them different tasks to do. And at the end of the experiment, the people wearing the lab coats had 50% less errors in the tasks that they had to execute than the people who wore the normal street clothes. And the conclusion that they reached was that the things that we wear affects our energy. It affects the way that we show up and it affects the way that we perceive ourselves, which influences our results. It has a direct effect on our results in the world and the things that we do and the way that we move through the world. And there's a term for this. It's called enclosed cognition. All right. So coming back to our underwear then, the reason that I say we have to change our underwear, it's not for someone else. You're doing it for you. It's not to show someone else. It's simply so that your energy and who you are being and how you feel about yourself shifts. You can imagine if you are wearing all washed out undies that have holes in and the elastic is gone, how would you feel if you have that under your clothes? How would you behave? How would you move? How would you react in the world? Versus if you were wearing something that made you feel good, something that fitted well and something that, that makes you feel pretty or it makes you feel sexy or it makes you feel playful, right? It is going to affect the way that you behave. It is going to affect your energy. And remember, the world is a mirror. So everything that we put out, we get that back. And so whatever the energy is that we hold unconsciously, we don't do this on a conscious level. The energy that we hold unconsciously is going to be sent out into the world and we're going to get feedback from everyone interacting with our energy based on the energy that we are sending out. And this is just a very, very small and simple little trick um, and habit that you can get into, that you can use to really connect to your feminine energy, to connect to that truth of your essence. And then the final habit that I'm going to share with you in this episode today is to move your hips. We are so sedentary. We sit a lot of the time. And then when we do move, it usually is with a certain goal in mind, like to get from point A to point B or to do something specific. So we usually have a goal at the end of that. 
And also this habit that we get into of our energy going up into our minds and we're really disconnecting from our bodies. We're not really feeling our bodies, right? We've lost that sensitivity, as I said. And so by deliberately moving your hips, you don't have to have rhythm. It doesn't have to look good. Nobody's going to see you do this. This is a practice, again, that you do for yourself. When you deliberately move your hips, it brings your energy and your awareness back down into your body. Our brains are amazing. It's always going to send the energy where it's needed. So if you are always constantly up here, your energy is always constantly up here. If you bring your awareness and your attention down into your hips, into your lower body, this is the sacred seat of our feminine power. Guess where your energy is going to go? So begin to use these tools that we already have available to us, the way that our brain already works. Use that to your advantage. And so by, by constantly bringing your awareness down, you're starting to build new pathways. If you do something consistently, over a period of time. It becomes a habit. You don't have to do this where anybody sees you simply moving while you're brushing your teeth in the morning or while you're in the shower or just before you go to bed at night. Simply by moving your hips in a figure eight or wiggling them from side to side, what you're doing is you bringing that awareness and that intention down into your body. This will allow you to start to become more sensitive, right? Because you're starting to feel your body. Doing it once is not going to do anything. These practices, everything that I'm sharing with you, all of these habits are, are habits. They are things that we need to do consistently over a period of time, and then we will start to see the benefits. But I bet if you are going to put some very nice undies on, you'll feel the effects of that immediately. So I really hope that you found this episode helpful and insightful and I would love to know from you in the comments below which habits of these are you already practicing and which ones are you going to start with if they haven't been on your radar before. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.